So the question was, how can you make something which is atomically perfect, which is many square centimeters in scale? Well, uh, I did like this. Ooh, finally, I did something. <laughs> Uh, scientists uh, use uh, diffraction gradients uh, to disperse light for more than 200 years. They are actually uh, two-dimensional surface structures because they are fabricated by making parallel lines on a surface. What we are trying to do, we develop uh, a new kind of X-ray gradients which are three-dimensional structures and we fabricate them by deposition a multi-layer coating on a sawtooth substrate. Uh, such three-dimensional uh, structure can have uh, much higher groove density and can operate in high diffraction order. So now I'm going to show you how a diffraction grating works in practice. So I'm going to take my grating, a regular optical grating, and my advanced light source, which is a flashlight. I'm going to shine the flashlight on the grating, and then you see uh, the grating acting uh, simply as a mirror. We see the white light uh, of the flashlight reflected. Now I'm going to rotate the grating as we rotate a grating in ALS beam line, and that white light you see is split up into a beautiful rainbow spectrum. If you keep on rotating the grating, we get more spectra. So here is another spectrum, and you can see that it is more spread out. So this is called the second order spectrum, and if you rotate more, you get the third order spectrum, which is more spread out again. So in our new grating technology, what it allows us to do is to work not only in first order, but in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and we've actually operated up to the ninth spectral order, and what that means is nine times the spectral resolution of a regular grating. There are two unique new aspects uh, of this work. One is the fact that we've uh, improved an existing process, which is the production of the substrates, these silicon substrates, which have atomically perfect terraces. That was an existing process, and it worked to some extent, and we found out how to make it essentially perfectly. So all of the atoms in one facet are in a single plane. And if you look at a cross-section of one of these gratings with transmission electron microscopy, it is amazing. Every atom, essentially, that's an exaggeration, but more or less every atom is in the right place. The second um, major innovation in this work is that if you want to make a super efficient grating, you can't do it with a single surface. What you need to do is you need to make multiple gratings which lie on top of each other. So you make a three-dimensional grating, not a two-dimensional grating. And that was a real challenge. And what we did for that was once we'd formed an essentially atomically perfect substrate, we evaporated a low Z material and then a high Z material, a low Z material, high Z material, until we'd formed a three-dimensional structure. And the trick in this is to figure out how to do this replication of the perfect surface. So the hundredth layer above that surface is also still perfect. So these two aspects together, the fact that you can make an atomically perfect grating and then you can replicate it in three dimensions, this led to an entirely new type of grating and this was the origin of the patent. This is an entirely new and unique piece of work. So you have, as, as I mentioned, you have a lot of technological steps but uh, only beamline measurements of diffraction efficiency, this is the final most important test, which shows you uh, total quality of the whole of the process. Okay. And yes, when you measure diffraction efficiency and you see you, you, you got a uh, world record in diffraction efficiency, that's really nice. Uh, feeling. <laughs> yeah. So the patent itself is not exciting. It's, it's just <laughs> no. paperwork. I hate it. <laughs>